investor or you want to be a real estate investor and you want more funding for your deals, you're in the right place. I'm gonna plug you into the money in just a moment. All right, who else has got a uh, question that we can ask? Okay, so we've got right here, Crystal, and then in my room, we've got Dan, and then right next to Dan. All right, go. Um, do you, what is your take on properties that are up the tax sale? Um, I'm sorry, the taking properties that are up the tax sale? Oh, that are up the tax sale. Yes. I think it's a great opportunity. In fact, I just recently heard someone got a house that was worth one hundred twenty or one hundred fifty thousand dollars for three thousand dollars. Yes. So here in here in our county, unfortunately, they don't come around for about every four or five years. We're in such a small county. They the county waits until they have enough people that are behind on taxes to really make it worth to actually go through uh, the filings and etc. But yes, people that are behind on taxes, excellent opportunity. So if y'all like that question, that answer, everybody do either a thumbs up or love hearts coming across the screen. Awesome. All right, uh, the next question, uh, where are we going, Bobby? All right, Dan? Hey, Jay. Love your event, love you. you Thank you. Uh, question is, when you have a private lender on the and you find a property that is time sensitive, such as a bank foreclosure. Some of the times you have a very limited window in order to obtain your financing. Right. How quickly can I reach out to my private lender and expect to receive the money to be able to close on this? That is an excellent question. So, that, in fact, using private money for your funding, folks, that's one of the most powerful reasons to use private money is because you can close so quickly. In fact, on all of uh, our offers, we tell the seller that we can close within seven days. Now, of course, if it's a bank owned property, they can't even move that fast, all right? So when you have a property under contract, of course, Carol Joy and I, we keep a running list of which of our private lenders, we have 45 private lenders right now, all across the nation, investing into our business. We have a running list as to what is uh, what lenders have money available who we'll be using next, depending on the size of the investment. Um, and so we call that person and answer your question, Dan. As soon as the house is under contract, we call the private lender right away. And if it's just liquid funds that they're using to invest with us, we ask that we give them a date, which is typically about seven days out uh, of wiring their funds to our real estate attorney. Uh, if the funds are actually in a retirement account, and that's a really cool strategy, uh, our private, half or more of our private lenders actually loan their money to us from their retirement accounts. And I don't have time to go into how that works, but uh, perhaps we'll use a self-directed IRA as one of our free coaching Friday topics. So in answer to your question, Dan, seven days. We'll make the offer in seven days. We contact the private lender right away. If they don't already have the uh, wiring instructions to our real estate attorney, we'll give them the wiring instructions. Another cool strategy that we do that helps us get more deals from sellers is that we'll make the offer to close in seven days and we'll let them stay in the house rent free for 30 to 60 days to give them another incentive to do business with us. So if you like Dan's question and the answer, everybody give a thumbs up coming across the screen and some love hearts if you love the answer. All right, perfect. All right, the next question. Right back over here, I it was. Yep. Down the, there we go. All right. I'm getting back to my other question. There was just a tag that you didn't answer. What document do I use when I'm at that foreclosure and the person is agreeing? Okay, good question. Well, actually, so I used uh, in here in North Carolina, I used the North Carolina Standard Offer to Purchase. Okay. Yes, thank you so much. So, getting houses under contract, I used the standard offer to purchase. All right, we've got time for a couple more questions. So anybody, have we had another question sent in, Kent? Yeah. All right, so what question have we had sent in? It's from Rob. He asks, what is the technical reasons you have two LLCs? Pros and cons. Okay, good question, Rob. So why do I have two different LLCs? It makes it easier for our accountant or CPA to keep up with our business. So there are, there's tax 
consequences that are different when you're having buy and holds, okay? Particularly if you have not been flagged as a dealer, all right? So I am a dealer. What in the world is a dealer? Well, a dealer in real estate investing is when it is your primary source of income. Until that time, when a house you've had for more than 12 months and then it cashes out, it's long-term capital gains, less than 12 months, it's ordinary income. So, but the main reason is that it just separates my buy and hold houses from my quick flips and uh, the, it's an easier job for the accounting or CPA to keep up, okay? Uh, do we have another question, Cindy and Kent? Not that I can see. Okay, all right. So are we all good? Has anybody got one more question before we call it a wrap on free coaching? Friday, okay, one more question right up here. And here comes Crystal. Oh, Sheree, this. When looking for a real estate agent to work with, what do we, what should we look for in them and what, and really what should we expect for them to Provide. Right, right. So, in other words, what are you looking for when you're looking for a real estate agent? All right. I'm glad you asked that question, Shrey, and I'll tell you why. It's either two or just three episodes ago, I did a whole 20 to 30 minute session on how to find a real estate agent. <laughs> All right. I also did another recent episode on um, how to find a local realtor. All right. But let me go ahead and give you one or two of the tips that I've never did. So you asked about the agent, right? So one way is to ask for referrals from a couple of different places. You can ask for referrals from your real estate attorney's office because they'll know who does a lot of closings and who they might work in with that actually does what they say they will do. You can also go to your local RIA, which stands for your Real Estate Investing Association, or Meetup. There's lots of Meetup groups now. All right, that are real estate investors, and ask for referrals there as to who are good realtors to do this with. All right, one more time, folks. Let's get Evan. Oh, here's Carol Joy. Y'all, this is my wife, Carol Joy. Hey, everybody, thanks for joining us. We had a great week. We want you to come visit us at the Christmas Yep, we're doing this event here uh, in East North Carolina uh, at least four times a year now, and so we'd love to have you come to the event uh, in the near future. So everybody here is live. Let's give everybody that tuned in online a hand for joining us. Bye for now.